And um, brothers and sisters, we're here at a very special moment indeed. The almonds are blossoming here in the, uh, in the Great Central Valley, just outside of Fresno. And this is a very, very special time of year. It only lasts for about a week, a week and a half or so. But it's upon this, these crucial days that the almond crop depends. And we're talking about a, uh, uh, like the almond crop last year, with, with ha, uh, just how, ma how many pounds was it, would you say? Oh, last year we produced somewhere, we averaged, I think, uh, somewhere around 1,600 pounds to the acre. 1,600 pounds to the acre. So for, for what sort of total crop was that? Uh, what do you mean total? Pound-wise for yeah, all? Pound, pound. Uh, I think we produced on this around 650,000 pounds. 650,000 pounds, that's amazing. By the way, people, we're, we're here on, on, the, uh, on the ranch of Purity Organics, and I'm here with, with, uh, uh, with Nick, with Nick Kortoff, and with, and with Dave Kortoff. Uh, the, the, the Kortoff family and we understand uh, Nick that you, you've been uh, farming almonds on this land for something upwards of five generations or so. Uh, not almonds but this particular ranch this is the old homestead that my grandfather uh -huh. when he came from uh, uh, from Russia uh -huh. they settled right over here about oh. two about a hundred oh. yards from here is where the uh, homestead was. Yes and uh, this particular field is is the old ranch the first one uh, when my grandfather came here and started and he had uh, several uh, uh, children and my father was the youngest son mm -hmm. on the ranch mm -hmm. and my dad uh, after my uh, uh, grandfather retired mm -hmm. my father started farming mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and then when my father retired I start farming it uh -huh. and now David's coming along uh -huh. and for, hopefully he'll have four or five sons pretty soon How and, wonderful. and take over. I want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. That is so magnificent. That's that's so great. So when, when they first came over here and I imagine it, 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 it was at, at, at the turn of the previous century. Yes. In, 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 uh, in what year did they first arrive? Uh, I believe it was somewhere in this area. Uh, they came from Russia yeah, to yeah. Panama, to the Panama Canal. To Los Angeles. Right, they right, helped build the Panama right. Canal yeah. and uh, ended up in this area. Uh, uh, uh. And somewhere around, I think, 1918. In 1918? Period. Yeah. I know 1918, which was just which was just during the the first probably they probably came here just before the first world war, probably. because after that the gates closed and it became much much harder yeah. to come in. So they probably came, and when they came here, they they they, they came here. They um, uh, just what just how how many acres did they start farming? This particular ranch, right, where we're sitting right here, is 20 acres. So, so they they this started. Is on 20 acres here. Uh, it, it, it was 20 acres of almonds? No, it was no. just 20 acres just 20 of tumbleweeds when of they tumbleweed. got here. 20 acres and they of tumbleweed. developed the 20 acres and they first put it in, I think, pasture. Pasture. And coming from the old country, they always had a pasture where they had cows, uh -huh. chicken. Uh -huh. So they were self sufficient. They grew all their own vegetables oh, and canned them and fruits. Oh, how and beautiful. And when you have two cows on mm. a thing, you have cheese, you have yeah. butter, you yeah. have milk, yeah, milk, you have beef because uh, the calves come mm. along. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so they were very almost self sustained, mm. other than. Mm -hmm. uh, necessities they had to buy mm -hmm. and as they as uh, my grandfather uh, uh, retired my father took over mm -hmm. but it wasn't enough 20 acres to support there, mm -hmm. there's nine children in our family oh there's four of us boys <laughs> and five sisters how wonderful and how the little house beautiful. that was on a homestead mm -hmm. here it was a two bedroom mm -hmm. and my grandparents lived in one bedroom mm -hmm. my mom and dad mm -hmm. with the girls were in another bedroom mm -hmm. and in the hallway my brothers and oh, all, all in slept. the hallway in a hallway oh, in a little bed my. Oh my! And no indoor oh, yeah. uh, uh -huh. bathrooms or nothing. It was uh -huh. an outside facility. Oh, oh. But the old bat house, the old steam bat in the back, where you have your uh, bats once a week, whether you need it or not. You need it or not. <laughs> I understand that. That was self self sufficiency 
for sure. Let, let me ask the, uh, uh, the, the, the great question. Okay, so originally you started off as a 20-acre self-sufficient homestead, so to speak. When did you start planting almonds? I didn't, uh, I'm the first one after my dad retired, I took over this particular ranch and I leased it from him mm -hmm. and down the road was another ranch mm -hmm. that I leased for a few years mm -hmm. and yeah. I ended up, per ended up purchasing, it was mm -hmm. roughly in 19... 67. 1967. I bought that and I think in 1968 I planted the first 20 acres of almonds. Uh, the first 20 acres of almonds? Yeah, and I was the second one in this whole area uh -huh. to plant almonds uh -huh. at that time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And as you can see now, just about every other field is solid uh -huh. almonds here right uh -huh. now. But back then, that was well, 47, 48 years ago. Uh -huh. Just I had 20 acres and another neighbor down the road over here had uh, 20 acres. That's all in the whole area. Uh -huh. Okay, so they, so in in 1967 is when you started yep. out with almonds. I see, I see. And, and it, it was originally a, a, a span of around 20 acres. Did you? Just yes, 20, we started with 20, 20 acres. Years of, uh, and 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 now, ju ju uh, uh, just what do you have planted out in almonds now? We have uh, this year we're, we're planting another 80 acres. We'll be just a little under 600 acres now. From 20 acres to 600 acres of almonds, that's pretty impressive. And ju just as a ballpark figure, um, 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 in, in terms of trees, just how many trees do you have on that 600 acres? Just as... Somewhere about close to 70,000 trees. 70,000 trees. 70,000 trees on 600 acres. That's pretty impressive indeed. And the entire operation is organic. Yes. So therefore you aren't using any sorts of chemical fertilizers or pesticides or sprays or any such no. thing. So my first uh, question is this, how do you cope with insects, with creepy crawlies and all of that? We have organic sprays that are made out of organic uh, products. Uh, mm -hmm. Some are mined. Mm -hmm. And some are, uh, for instance, uh, oils uh, squeezed from neem and different plants from different to make plants. an oil mm -hmm. that we spray on mm -hmm. that uh, kill the mm -hmm. insects. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. and even the fertilizers, we put foliar uh, fertilizer on the tree a that which are, we're doing right now yeah. is uh, actually comes from fish meal. Uh, it's a fish meal, so you, you're yes. actually spraying a, a, a foliar fish meal spray yes. on the trees. You're also spraying some sort of seaweed spray. Uh, and seaweed, on too. seaweed too. And, uh, seaweed too. And we put on too. the same time for nutrients. For nutrients. But in the fall of each year, we come in and we put about 10 ton of compost on. And uh, right about the 1st of November, and we disc it in. Mm -hmm. And so that'll that carry us through through the following uh, year. We just put it on once a year. Uh huh. Okay, and, and, and the, uh, uh, um, the compost is basically cow manure, or largely cow manure. Yes, yes, largely it's composted and, and, and uh, It's composted and cow manure, aged and composted cow manure. That's so, so, so beautiful. So, so that answers my question as to how you, you, uh, 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 you, you bring fertility to your trees. How does your, your, pro, uh, your, your, your productivity on this orchard compare to a conventional commercial uh, almond orchard? Well, we we figure uh, on uh, most normal years, we're somewhere around 15 to 20 percent less. 15 to 20 percent yes. less, okay. But we're, we're working at that to try to fill that gap in. We're mm. trying different things and mm. I think uh, with the different things we're trying and new nutrients we're putting on and stuff, I think in a few years we'll be very compatible with conventional. Just about the same product. Yeah. That's very, very impressive indeed. And the other thing that you have going for you, which they don't have, it, uh, 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 is the topsoil, is building a living topsoil. Yeah. Whereas the topsoil that they have, which is he heavily chemicalized and yeah. uh, and pesticided and so forth it's just a, a dead substance it's just yep. there to simply hold up the trees whereas you have something living vibrant and alive which yes. makes all the difference so in the long run and yes. the long run is what we're here for mm -hmm. that will make all the difference in the world yes yes uh, 
in the springtime here in another few weeks when we start irrigating it warms up we will come out here it's unbelievable the ground will be when we in the water will be solid earthworms solid earthworms yeah <laughs> unbelievable that we never seen that before <laughs> after italian guess when you put chemicals on like uh, made from petroleum stuff like yeah. that it actually kills those of earthworms. course it kills the vibrancy yeah. it kills the life of yeah. the soil so and when we put this compost it's almost a natural feed from they feed mm -hmm. on that and mm -hmm. plus the other mm -hmm. uh, uh mm -hmm. the nutrients that are in the soil mm -hmm. and they aer aerate the soil and mm -hmm. how do you say they kind of self cultivate uh -huh. it uh -huh. you know and uh mm -hmm. He kind of he kind of skipped on part of our uh, program we started last year was predatory insects. Uh huh. So we're trying to cut back on some of the uh, spraying the oil for insect uh -huh. control, and we're jumping into a predatory uh, insect control. Oh, that that's so wonderful. Yeah. For example, if, if you could give an, me an example of of, 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 of of just what sort of of a beneficial in, uh, uh, insects you 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 you're bringing out here, you know, uh, out into the trees. We got a spider mite that covers a tree and it cuts out the sun and yeah. it actually kills off the tree a little bit and stops production and it drops the foliage. Yeah. While well, they bring in a predatory mite that comes in and eats them. A predatory mite? Yeah, yes. a predatory that, that, mite. That, a predatory mite that, that goes ahead and, and eats the spider yeah. mite. Yeah. That's so beautiful. So that and we're so working with another ag department in the college where mm -hmm. they're bringing in out a new, micro, almost a microscopic, uh, like a wasp. Yeah, a wasp. It actually stings the, uh, the worms. Orange navel and worm. It kills an orange mm -hmm. navel worm. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. one of our, our biggest problems in the orchard is orange navel worm. Mm -hmm. And what happens, they're bringing in these little tiny wasps. They almost look like a gnat. Uh -huh. size of, and they call mm -hmm. it a wasp. Mm -hmm. And it comes in mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it, it finds the egg in it, or the worm itself and it lays its eggs in it and kills yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, and That's... then we had a predatory mite. And this year we're going to try some uh, six-spotted thrip mm -hmm. that work real good too. <laughs> oh. They say if the predatory mite don't clean it up, when you put those thrip out there, mm -hmm. actually you got to be careful because they'll eat everything and starve to mm -hmm. death. So we got to have a balance of them. A balance, know? a balance, yeah. a balance. Uh, that that's very very ingenious so basically uh i, I really want to hear that so there are so many alternatives to, 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 to you know to, to, to just spraying with with uh, uh, with roundup and heavy pesticides yep. and heavy chemicals mm -hmm. it's just a mirror you know mm -hmm. just like they say we, 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 uh, where there's a will there's a way and we human beings are so ingenious that if there's a problem to be solved we're going to solve that problem you know, it might not be right away, next yeah. year or next year, but down the road, it's going to be solved. I, I really feel very, very encouraged to hear that. Indeed, yeah. that's, um, that's so very, very exciting. And, and you know, we're trying uh, uh, new varieties of trees, too. This, this is a new variety, right? Mm -hmm. This tree in back of mm -hmm. us here mm -hmm. is a super rail. And that one right there is a nonpareil. Nonpareil, superareil, and a nonpareil, non and they pollinate each other, and they're both soft shell almonds, uh -huh, uh -huh. and very high quality. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, the superareil might be just a little bit bigger than nonpareil, but it's an excellent, uh -huh. and uh, so they're a premium nut. Premium nut. I've, yeah. I, 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 I've heard of nonpareils for years, but a, 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 a superareil. That's something new. Yeah, it's There's only about old. it's only about five years old. The variety. And so we've been planting our last, uh, we're planting another field uh, probably middle next week. We'll be putting 80 acres of them in, mm -hmm. super L non Super L and non -pareil. And of actually, of one yeah. Of them. And the last two mm -hmm. orchards, we planted the same variety because they're a premium mm -hmm. soft shell. Oh, how beautiful. I, I want to hear that indeed. And then, of course, but, but still in all, uh, still in all, each and every blossom, in my understanding, it has to be visited by a bee yes. if you're going to get an almond. Yes. So uh, I, I understand you have your hives out here right yeah, now. Yeah, they're right here in oh, back of us. We might want to take a look at the at the hives right over there. And we placed two hives per acre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, this year we had beautiful pollinating weather. It's uh -huh. been sunny mm -hmm. and fairly dry. We only had one rain. It only rained at night that one day. Mm -hmm. And so we're ready just about peak pollen peak pollinating time on this thing. Beautiful. So uh, I think uh, Lord Warden will have a good crop because oh, we had wonderful weather and it's dry. Perfect weather, balmy clear, warm yep. weather. Desire. 
by the way, you hear a whole lot about die off of bees, you know, and that's a, I understand that's a very, very serious problem. Where do these bees come from? These bees we have here come uh, come from the East Coast. We brought them you in brought from them Louisiana. From, the East, from Louisiana. They came that's from amazing. Louisiana. That's amazing. That's a wonderful. So you've brought in bees several from several thousand miles away mm -hmm. from Louisiana yes. in order to pollinate the crop. That's amazing. And for for, for how long are, are, are the bees going to be here in the field? Uh, they, we usually have them for four weeks. For four weeks? Yeah. For four weeks, just Actually, to make these, sure. These particular bees here run the eastern seaboard. They mm. start from Florida. When they move out from our Almas, uh -huh. they'll truck them to Florida where they'll start with the oranges. Oh, that's And amazing. they'll work their way all the way to Maine. Oh, and they'll from be, Louisiana to California, yes. and then Florida and to Maine. Yes. Their main run is from Florida to Maine and they overwinter them in Louisiana. Oh, that is amazing. What are the bees going to do in in, in, um, uh, 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 in Maine? I, I would have thought that that's mainly potatoes. Yeah, but that they'll go up there. Uh, they have everything from blueberries up blueberries. there. Blueberries. Ah. And what is that other one? Uh, cranberry. Cranberry, cranberries, and of they, course. They have a lot of fruit and uh -huh. vegetables on the eastern seaboard. Uh -huh. But they start with the oranges. Actually, we're building them up right now. When they take them to Florida, these bees will be They're going to be strong. robust. They're yes. going to be healthy. Yes. They're having a great time. Yeah. That's amazing thing. But that means that you're talking of a round trip of something like of, of, of upwards of, of seven, 8,000 miles or yes. so. Yeah. So they, 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 they're certainly travelers, that's yeah, for sure. They're, they're that, earning travel, travel that, miles. <laughs> but, bon, bonus miles, that's amazing. That is uh, amazing. I'm so very, very glad to, uh, to hear that. Let me ask the, uh, the great question. Um, despite the rains we've having, and we are so blessed by the rains you know, this year, um, what about the challenge? We're still, no one is saying that the drought is, is really, uh, is over. No, by no means, I've never heard anyone say that. So we're still in the fifth year yeah. of a drought. How much of a challenge, what, what you, 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 just what are you doing to meet that challenge? In this particular uh, orchard here in this area, we over the years we had surface water, what we call ditch water, mm -hmm. and we get the water once a month, once a month, again, for roughly anywhere from six to eight months every year. Mm -hmm. the last two years we had that, mm -hmm. and so we had to count on our uh, deep water wells. Uh -huh. And everybody in this area was doing the same thing. There was such an overdraft in this area. We had four wells go yeah, dry four last wells. year. Oh my! So we had to uh, dig four wells last year, yeah. and uh, I think we're in pretty good shape right now. Meanwhile, we had some pretty good rains and stuff. Yes. And uh, we talked to the irrigation district this morning. They said they think we're going to get four irrigations this year. Oh, how wonderful. For four months. I'm so glad. And that's a blessing for us because the less we run the pumps, the less um, overdraft right. we have on our wells. Exactly, because the pumps happen to be the, the very the, 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 the fallback position, yeah. the very last resort. Yeah. Oh God, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. I'm so glad. Because when, when, when I was here a year ago, you know, I looked at some of the pumps in the field and it, it looked pretty, pretty critical because, because that's, that was the only source of water you yes. have. So I'm so glad now that we, we, we have snow banks up, up in the high Sierras you know, so we have something to uh, to fall back upon. Yes. That makes every that's a tremendous blessing. What you so, Jesse, is when you get to the west side over there, mm -hmm. even with the rain, you're not going to give them no water this year. Oh, oh my! They're not going to get no water. They said if they get any, you'll get maybe five or ten percent. Mm -hmm. Well, that is nothing. Uh -huh. And a lot of them out there don't have no deep wells on oh, their orchards and stuff. Oh. So that's why we have three so, to four hundred thousand acres laying barren out there because oh. there's no water. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I see. So it, it's really a, 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 a it's still a touch and go situation. Yes. Yeah. It's still a touch and yeah. go situation. That's that's an amazing an amazing story. Let me ask you this: uh, so besides water, what do you what are the biggest challenges that you're facing? 
Well, our biggest challenge is weather, and this year looks very favorable mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. But things can change overnight. Mm -hmm. We can have a, a, a cold front move in from the north, mm -hmm. and we can get a frost in here, mm -hmm. and it's happened before. Mm -hmm. And these things are very vulnerable to a frost, That's and they will not tolerate more than one hour below 30 degrees before you have severe damage. So and if you have, uh, as you drop the degree, uh, you have more and more damage mm -hmm. up until if it got gets to 29 mm -hmm. or 28 degrees for a couple hours mm -hmm. you can have a hundred percent so other than that that's very challenging that's mm -hmm. why we are getting ready to flood irrigate right away to seal the ground oh, to seal because the ground. that'll warm it up no oh how wonderful yeah and that way it'll it'll be about three to four degrees warmer than if you leave it uh, clean like that and bare uh-huh so uh, Right now, uh, we're starting all our pumps up right now. Within the next few days, we'll have water going on every one of our uh, farms to, mm -hmm. uh, to start uh, uh -huh. sealing the ground. So to seal the ground I, I, I actually warms it up. Yes. And, and that's a significant by four or five degrees. Yeah. It never well, would have occurred. What happens when it's worked like this yeah. here, during the day, it loses the heat. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. During the day, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because the ground is loose, mm -hmm. when it's solid and, and it's wet, uh -huh. It, it heats up and it won't lose the heat uh -huh. at three or four degrees. Uh -huh. It stays right there. That and is so beautiful. I'm so glad to hear that. That is beautiful. So that that's a real challenge, and you're you're certainly coping with it uh, in a very creative way. Mm -hmm. Besides that, are, are there any other challenges, major challenges that you see? Well, uh, some years we have insect problems. Uh, uh -huh. uh, mm -hmm severe mm -hmm. other years not so bad mm -hmm. but like I says that uh, we have uh, we have a lot of tools in a tool chest mm -hmm. now to help mm -hmm. about 10 years ago when we started there wasn't very many mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. the first year or second year we had a lot of damage because we had no experience yeah. working with organic right, sprays right. now we got quite a few uh, things to work with yeah. and they work very well you have so many choices now yes how yes. wonderful I'm so very very glad yeah. You, so, uh, and the main thing is, the main thing is, as I say, is vibrant, fragrant, alive, fragrant soil. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the friability of the soil is so, so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's just like, it, it, it's like a, 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 a sort of cake or a sort of pudding or a sort of cookie dough almost. That's just, I mean, just the feel, the life in the in the soil. That is such a precious thing. See our prunings, we used to burn them, now we shred them and put them right back in the soil. You shred them and put them right yeah. back. Yeah, oh. shred it, put it right back in the Everything soil. Everything is, uh, is recycled. Everything, of course. And of course, you you, you, you have dairies around here. We, yeah. we, we have pl yes. plenty of cow manure. So it's it's all composted, it's all aged, composted, yes. and then it's put, put right back yeah. on. That is so, so, so beautiful indeed. So that's that's quite a uh, a story you're, you're you're telling us, Nick. As I understand it, just to summarize, just to get my head clear on that, you originally started out. Uh, your 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 parents came over here from the old country, and started a homestead mm -hmm. with chickens, cows, and goats on 20 acres, and it, it was mainly j j uh, 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 you know just to, to support a family of nine children, yeah. as I recall. That's amazing. And then from from there, you've sort of grown. So now, um, uh, 650 acres. Oh, 600. 650 acres, acres. Yeah. and on those six, 650 acres, something in the order of 70,000 trees. Yeah. And the the uh, your your uh, uh, your crop last year, the figure of the, uh, the, the 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 actual poundage of almonds that well, we you harvested? Were, we were around 650,000 pounds. 650,000 pounds But we have almonds. orchards in different stages, like this mm -hmm. orchard is a young orchard. Mm -hmm. It had very little crop on it last That's year. Right. It hardly had any crop. Mm -hmm. And we have other orchards that are, are how do you say, just coming in bearing yeah and yeah. other ones that are very old that we're removing yeah so we're recycling all the time yeah. so they're not a hundred percent uh uh in our what we call prime bearing acres uh -huh. okay so so you you have more and more acreage which is coming on all the time yeah that is so heartening that's so beautiful uh i'm uh, i'm just very very glad to hear that indeed and i just want to tell you that I feel uh, very, very encouraged because 
the whole thing here, and this is an example, you know, there's so much craziness out there. There's so much madness out there. The world is going into uh, such, a, um, such a wrongful direction, in my humble opinion. And yet it's family farmers, such as Nick and, and, uh, and David Kortov, that are the lifeblood of this country. They are the true guardians of this precious topsoil upon which all life depends. Everything depends on the topsoil. It's only maybe a foot deep or so, but, but without that, there is no life on this planet. So these are the guys who are making California agriculture, California farming viable and possible. We're all permanently indebted to to, to to the Kortoff family, building up, coming over here from the old country with basically with, 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 with their shirts on their back and producing uh, 650,000 pounds of almonds last year and probably a lot more this year. We, 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 we certainly wish you a prosperous and a bountiful crop indeed. So I just want to say it's our privilege to, 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 uh, 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 you know, to be here at this special vibrant time and to be talking with you guys, the true guardians of what's real, right, and, uh, and earnest in American agriculture. Thank you so much. A privilege and an honor to be speaking We're honored with you. to have you come out and hear our story. Uh, and uh, better than that, to uh, buy our almonds. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Such a vibrant time. We're so blessed to be here. Yeah, this is a wonderful time, you know, uh, of the year. You know, it's uh, starting to warm up and uh, all the blooms are mm -hmm. out. And I was out driving a tractor just a while ago mm -hmm. and all I can smell is the fragrance from the bloom. Mm -hmm. Not only that, I'm going through and they're falling on me. I was uh -huh. covered, half covered in the blooms as I'm working the soil, you know. But every now and then one of those bees, you know, gets on your nose and you slap and it bites you. <laughs> I think Dave here just got bit on the head here a couple hours ago. <laughs> Imagine that, the fragrance of the bloom, that's what really matters in this California, in this America. Where else are, are you going to find this yeah. but, but here, you know, where else? So that, that, that makes my day, that makes my year. I'm so glad. It, it's been a whole year since we've been out here. Yeah. And this is the time of year we, we, we all look forward to this. A privilege and an honor indeed. Hey, thank you for coming out. Thank you. And, uh, thank you.